Good morning, beautiful people. Uh, there are nearly 10,000 teachers in CTS with a master's degree and 10 or more years of experience. This is the pool of people from which CPS draws its assistant principals who eventually become its principals. Last month at this meeting, I highlighted the fact that CPS pays these teachers an average of more than $70 per hour, while it pays the average assistant principal less than $55 an hour, according to data released by CPS last December in response to a FOIA request. We have no problem with teachers making $70 an hour. Our students certainly need this district to pay a salary that allows us to attract and retain the best teachers. Our problem is with the fact that this district does not take the same approach with its principals and particularly its assistant principals, paying them on average $15 an hour less than the people they supervise. It can be difficult to see the impact of this hourly wage inequity when comparing annual salaries since assistant principals work during Christmas break, spring break, and for the entire summer when teachers are off. However, there are schools in our district where both the teachers and administrators work throughout the summer and the impact of the hourly wage difference on annual salary can be clearly seen in those schools. For example, teachers and administrators at Jefferson Alternative School work during the entire summer, teachers and administrators. CPS pays 40 teachers at Jefferson more than the $103,000 starting salary of an assistant principal. CPS pays $109,000 in salary to one of Jefferson's assistant principals. According to the latest CPS position roster, that $109,000 salary is less than the annual salary that CPS pays to 31 of the teachers that that assistant principal supervises. Can you imagine being that assistant principal? Can you imagine being any assistant principal in a system that so disrespects the worth of our work? That's on top of other insults, like principals having to do the work of clerks who are out on ADA accommodation, while the principal himself was denied the same ADA accommodation for asking to stay at home with their kids who are legally not allowed to be at home. Perhaps the most troubling aspect of this pay inequity is that unlike your teaching force, which is predominantly white, your administrators are predominantly African-American and Hispanic. According to information we obtained from CPS through a separate 2019 FOIA request, more than 65% of CPS administrators are non-white, and nearly 65% of those non-white administrators are African American. This board needs to reckon with the fact that this district created, presides over, and continues to justify an institutionally racist system of compensation because you, CPS are paying your predominantly non-white administrators less than the predominantly white teaching force that they supervise. We will never know if this is an intentional or the result of systemic bias, but we do know that it's real and it needs to be addressed. Unfortunately, it's just the latest in a long line of racist policies and systems to come out of CPS. Whether it be how you fund schools, how you rank or rate our schools, how you build additions to schools, how you close our schools, or how you evaluate and compensate the people who staff our schools. There is institutional racism at CPS from top to bottom, and it is time for the national reckoning on, reckoning on race in the United States to burst through the doors at 42 West Madison and fundamentally challenge and change the culture and leadership of this district in a way that ensures that every child gets the policies and resources they need to realize their full potential. And the resources that the two most important resources that this board can give those children are the best possible teachers and the best possible principals. But the road to the principalship starts with the position of assistant principal, a position that fewer and fewer of our best teachers are willing to take on because of the pay cut that they'd have to take. This is not a question of will the district lose great principals because of this pay inequity. It has already lost them. It lost them in the form of all of the great teachers who turned down offers to become assistant principals in CPS because of the backward, inequitable, and insulting compensation system that you continue to uphold. You have lost some of the best and brightest because of this inequitable system, and you will lose even more if you do not fix it. A core group of CPA members, CPAA members have come together 
and formed a compensation working group charged with describing this inequitable system, raising consciousness of these inequities, developing a proposal for a system that will attract and retain the best educators to our ranks, and getting administrative buy-in and public support for the proposal they developed. In conclusion, at your August board meeting, if I heard them correctly, one board member publicly committed to working with the CPS administration to address this inequity. The more than 1,000 principals and assistant principals in CPS all hope that more of you make that same commitment today. And we'd like to remind you that our governing board at CPAA is the only body of administrators elected by their peers and is therefore the only body of administrators that can represent school leaders with any sense of democratic legitimacy. Any or all of you are welcome to confer with us at any time as we develop our proposal. 